Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast, the industry's first and longest running podcast now in our 16th year. I'm Roger Gross, the publisher of GGB. This week we welcome Omar Sitar, the co-founder and executive vice president of strategic initiatives for Sightline Payments on the accelerating progress toward cashless gaming in the land-based and online casino industries. This week's program is brought to you by Konami Gaming, champion in the 2021 Casino Management Systems Awards by Software Reviews. Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast. Our guest today is Omar Sitar, the Vice President of Sightline Payments and the co-founder of the company. Omar, thanks for joining us. It's great to see you. Roger, as always, great to see you as well. So, you know, uh, you were there right at the beginning as, as a co-founder of the company. Uh, you, you know, you shared the vision of, of everyone else who was, who was around in those days. And so why don't you give us an idea of, of, of what you were thinking about and, and how you, you eventually sold it to the operators and, and the investors for that matter? Uh, no, I really appreciate that. And 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 you're right. You know, we've been there from the very beginning, but I feel like you have as well. And so I'm following it, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we genuinely appreciate all the support over the years. You know, our vision has been, I think, well aligned. I mean, I think lots of operators have been talking about it for a very long time. It has kind of been this dream and this vision, this hope uh, of how does one electronify the gaming industry? What are the products and services that are going to make sense? Uh, you know, what is the what time is the right time to deploy a certain amount of technology? where there's going to be consumer adoption for it. And so, you know, our thought has always been, is there a way uh, to reduce the dependence of cash of the brick and mortar casino industry? We started the business with that vision uh, in 2009 and 2010, and we quickly pivoted the business uh, towards sports betting, uh, first the iGaming, obviously, then subsequently sports betting. But the vision has always been the same. How do you create a consumer experience that allows a consumer to access their money anywhere they want any how they want, uh, whether that's digital or brick and mortar, uh, you know. And as for the investor base, you know, we've had some great investors early on, uh, some some partners with us that are still with us today, uh, you know, and 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 many new ones like uh, you know Bill Foley, uh, you know, who's, who who invested in us recently, and uh, but but the investors see that digital transformation coming as well. Uh, of this omni-channel ecosystem in gaming. So we've been very fortunate uh, to to hopefully see our vision come to fruition. So, you know, it, it seemed like you were making, you know, slow but steady progress, but uh, but just within the last year, it picked up quickly. Was that is that because of the pandemic that people realized that, you know, we don't want to handle that dirty cash anymore? Well, there's there's been a fundamental shift and there's this series of things that have happened so you know and I, and, I, and I, you know we'll, we'll, i'll run you through it very quickly I mean, in 2007 the iphone comes out no one had ever heard of an app before that right now there's an entire generation of kids that are growing up that know nothing but an app and uh you know it, you know subsequently a number of years later apple pay comes out before that there was no such thing and even a company like apple genuinely struggled in the beginning with apple pay adoption there were not enough banks there weren't enough merchants using it and uh i remember when the starbucks mobile app first came out it it was so intuitive and so new starbucks only tested it in dozens of locations then hundreds of locations and then had to make a significant infrastructure investment to deploy it across all of their stores now it's used by tens of millions of people and you know so from our standpoint there's been many things that have to happen in the macro world in order for the adoption to then come into the gaming world right the mobile technology had to get ready people had to get used to using things like apple uh, uh, apple pay and android pay uh, even uh, uh, face id has made a big difference and touch id which has got embedded right so people got more used to saying oh i can look at my phone and authenticate a transaction and do something with it and so all of those things have been building from a macro standpoint and there's no doubt about it that pandemic was helpful um i can tell you unequivocally in march of last year when everything shut down uh you know n- none of us knew what was in store for us uh, uh you know april was the same way in may of last year roger we started getting calls from operators around the country, commercial operators and tribal operators asking the question, hey, we need to start thinking about how and when we're going to reopen our properties. We want to know what you've got, what you've got built, what you can build, what's doable and what's doable quickly. And uh, and and needless to say, we've been waiting for that for a long time. And even in the macro world, if you look at the statistics from Visa, from MasterCard, from around the world, contactless payments have skyrocketed. Obviously, digital payments have skyrocketed. And uh, and and so so uh, definitely the pandemic has been a an inflection point for us in the gaming industry right definitely so let's focus yeah. on the most recent installation now uh, that you're putting in a resort world which will open this week uh, because i really think it's the complete version of, of the sightline products 
produced so far, especially the Play Plus system. Uh, uh, so customers who agree can com go completely cash in at this resort for the first time ever, correct? That is correct. I mean, it's res what, what Resorts World has, has done is truly remarkable, right? I mean, it's a big deal for a casino operator to launch, you know, one new product at a time. They've launched a handful of products, you know, mm -hmm. all at once. Now, you know, the uh, the pedigree of Resorts World is is obviously uh, incredible. Uh, they have been doing forms of cashless in their overseas properties for the better part of a decade. And mm -hmm. so they understand the economics of cashless and how they work and what drives consumer adoption. In fact, their Genting Highlands property in Malaysia is entirely cashless. You cannot play with cash. And, uh, you know, now they've actually taken that in partnership with us over here, with Konami and with others that we work with in order to deploy the system. Uh, it's gone a step further. It's actually full mobile cashless, cardless cash and contactless cashless and mm -hmm. so it, you're 100% you're right it is the ultimate vision uh, where you can you, you download a mobile app you create an account you can fund that account you can play on a slot machine you can play at a table game but you can then also spend your money anywhere in the resort you can eat and drink and mm -hmm. shop and dine and do all of those things and and it seamlessly integrated into all of that uh, is uh, are your loyalty points then so it is it, you know this this is the vision that we've been hoping for Sure, sure. So how are you going to roll it out to, to the new players at Resorts World? Yeah, so so Resorts World is a, is, a, is a very comprehensive strategy around that. That's, that's again, built in partnership with our with our friends from Konami, from NRT, with, with, with other folks that we partnered with on this. And, uh, you know, there's multiple tiers of engagement that are going to take place. There are people that are going to be contacted in advance of coming to the property. Mm -hmm. There are people that are, uh, in fact, you're going to see a very... Uh, customer-centric, hands-on approach to the property. I was just there. I just came from uh, from, from some of the media days there. Uh, and and when you go through the entire process, uh, uh, there are there are self-serve kiosks. So we also want people to start getting educated on kind of how we as consumers got educated uh, on doing self-serve kiosks when we travel. Right? Remember when the first kiosks were deployed? No mm -hmm. one wanted to use them. We still wanted to go to the agents. Now we all use the travel kiosk. In fact, there is a, if there isn't a kiosk, we're like, what's wrong with this airport? Why isn't there a kiosk? And mm -hmm. so there's a, there's a great new set of kiosks that have never been shown before that have been deployed that will lead to self-serve enrollment, there's cage enrollment, there's in-person enrollment, uh, and then there's the full mobile experience. Uh, and Resort Tools has built a very comprehensive strategy around that. And mm -hmm. So um, are, are you going to give give them any incentives to, to join this uh, program? Yeah, so there's a, there's a, there's a number of incentives uh, that are being put together. And uh, again, I mean, it's, it, it, it really is about loyalty, right? It really is about, you know, I, you know, how is the consumer going to want to interact? And, and oh, and one piece, I mean, when we speak about incentives, the same wallet is seamlessly in, uh, integrated into uh, into the IGT sports system with the, that Resorts World has. Mm -hmm. So so there's there's whole, there's tiers of, of, of enrollment levels. Uh, there's going to be incentives for enrollment, in, in, you know, incentives for usage, in, you know, incentives for top ops. And uh, so, so, you know, and, it, and it's going to be slightly different for sports betters versus slot players versus table game players. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, we're, we're pretty excited and uh, what what's going to be uh, you know unveiled over here starting Thursday and then running over the next uh, several months. Okay, so you know as you know uh, I I was uh, a participant in, in one of your beta tests at, at Mohegan Sun several years ago and uh, and uh, you know I, I had a hard time following, but I'm an old guy, you know, so <laughs> I, this new new technology uh, floors me a little bit. But but so so what what do people have to do right now if they if they want to uh, uh, you know, get onto this system at Resorts World, do, do they have to set up, how many different accounts do they have to set up to get started? So, so firstly, we'd always thank Mohican Sun for, 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 for being truly the first in the marketplace. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and, and, and that, as you remember, was not a mobile centric solution, right? right? You still had to have a card, you yeah. had to put a card in a slot machine and the world is going beyond that. So in this case, uh, you're downloading an app, uh, the app is taking all your information in and uh, there is real time AML built in, responsible gaming built in, there's KYC built in. So we've taken a lot of the learnings, Roger, from sports and from iGaming mm -hmm. and we're bringing it back into the brick and mortar casino. So we are authenticating you in real time as Roger grows and uh, we're then allowing you to tie in your payment instruments, credit cards, debit cards, PayPal, your checking accounts. 
cash, however it is that you want to fund your account. And uh, uh, yeah, we have still kept segregated segregated wallets between kind of your general spend wallet and your true gaming wallet. But when you see it in the app, it's very intuitive, and it's all within the app. And and within the app, so you 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 load your account with a hundred dollars. You now say you want to play, and you type in a hundred dollars. Uh, a a code generates, which you just, just either swipe at the uh, slot machine or the table game. Uh, if you're at the table game, the dealer knows exactly who you are. We're integrated into the Genesis system there, and they know who you are. They know you just bought in. It says position number four for a hundred dollars, and they give you your chips, and you can start playing. And, and when you want to leave the table, you always have the option of still taking your chips and leaving. Or if you tell the dealer, "Color me up, put it back in my account." Dealer types in a few numbers in the built-in keypad in the table. Money goes back into your account in real time. You can now take that account, swipe your phone uh, just the way you do Apple Pay, uh, and pay for lunch or pay for dinner. And mm -hmm. so, so, it, so it's like that Mohegan ecosystem, right. uh, but a number of steps uh, evolved beyond that. Right, right. And it was. It, is it is it just as easy to do as, as it was in those days? I mean, you know, it's, it's not a bit easier because it, that was, as I said, it was a little bit clunky. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, listen, again, this is this this is the evolution of all payments products, right? I mean, it, it has gone from it has gone from what was relatively clunky to a lot easier. Now, we are always striving for improvement uh, yeah. you know, as we continue to test. Uh, you know, there's a number of things where we know, for example, Nevada today does not uh, allow for remote ID verification. And so ID verification, before you can begin to play, uh, you still need to be verified at a kiosk with your ID or in person. And uh, But we know remote ID verification works very well by doing sports betting and iGaming in all the states that we do it in. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we hope that that's something that's going to change. And, and that takes that, that makes it reduces player friction uh, in terms of adoption. And so the, the user experience is going to continue to get enhanced, but where it is right now, uh, it, it really is the vision that we have. To, we have spoken about. You and I have spoken about a number of times over the years. And so, um, do you need more than one app? I mean, uh, obviously, it's a Genting Rewards app, uh, and then you need a Sightline app on top of that. And uh, or, or uh, the, that's a good question. So, we have been that was that was a critical piece for Resorts World. There's only one app. Right. The beauty of it is there's only one app. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, the provider of the app for 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 Genting is a company called called Joingo, which we just in fact purchased a few weeks ago. And uh, so it's it's one app. Your loyalty is integrated, your payments are integrated, and all your rewards are integrated. And so from a consumer standpoint, you are not hopping between apps. Uh, all your account balance is available to you in that single app and uh so it, it is a very seamless consumer experience and that was a requirement from the genting side and and we agreed with them from the very beginning that that was the right way to do it right okay so you yeah. mentioned some of the the partners you're with uh nrt and konami and and others uh, uh give us a rundown of, of of how how you all work together to, to really accomplish this yeah that's a very good question uh, you know in the world of payments so here's what we've realized over the years that all payments is done in partnership. There's 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 cooperation and cooperation. There is no such thing as providing payments by yourself. Even when you look at an Apple Pay ecosystem, you know Apple has to have many many people that you do revenue shares with. The transaction moves through many different systems, and it has to move seamlessly. and And that's what we built over here. So you know the slot system is Konami's. Uh, the table game system is with Genesis. The Tito kiosk and loyalty enrollment system is with NRT. The sports betting system is with IGT and so, you know, we become that central hub of payment. So we kind of create that central wallet. And once you say, you know, we created that central wallet, we tie it into the casino loyalty system through Konami. And then we tie it to all those different endpoints. And, you know, and that's what makes the seamless consumer experience through a single mobile app, single source of funding tied to everything a consumer will want to do. And then most importantly, not the non-gaming activity, right? I mean, if you look at the restaurants and resorts, I mean, there's beautiful restaurants and you want the consumer to be able to take their money and like I said, you know, pay for their lunch or pay for their dinner or go to the nightclub and do all of those things. And so we've done that piece as well of doing the point of sale integrations, uh, uh, you know, for all of those pieces. Maybe you want to pay for your valet ticket. Maybe you want to pay uh, for food at the pool. And, uh, you know, so it, it really is a seamless consumer experience now. And the only way you can do that is is by doing having a lot of partners. Sure, absolutely. So, yep. can you leave tips for your server on, on this on this app? We built. Uh, we're thinking about how the mechanics of that are going to work. Right. You know, obviously, there's going to be some kind of pool tip that is going to happen. Uh, and and but especially on on the gaming side, right? If if you're someone who just won a you know seven thousand dollar jackpot and you want to pay out a five hundred dollar tip. 
I right. mean, we certainly want the, the you know, the, the slot attendant to receive that. Uh, or, you know, I just had, you know, a, you know, a, a split aces uh, and, 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 and have played a really nice hand of blackjack. You know, I, I mean, I want to I want to pay my dealer here. And, uh, so so those are all things that are coming. And, you know, right. that's coming uh, that we have built in a number of responsible gaming features. Enhancements to that are coming. How people uh, can put delays in themselves, how quickly they can fund. Uh, what are the limit uh, capabilities on it? Uh, uh, you know, people want to uh, have a chip vault. If I have a certain amount of winnings that I want to put away uh, and not gamble with, we should be able to electron electronically lock them up exactly how you do kind of players do it today right i win some money i take chips off the table and i put it in my pocket well we should be able to create an electronic vault for you so there's a number of enhancements that are coming uh, uh particularly on that side of the business and okay. ranked at the top of the industry by software reviews Konami's Synchros Casino Management System leads in efficiency, effectiveness, productivity, and time savings. Over 400 gaming venues worldwide choose Synchros to power their gaming operations with robust in integrations, 99.9% .9 uptime, and the most advanced architecture in the industry. Discover more by visiting konamigaming.com slash system. And now back to our podcast. So let's yeah. talk about, about Joingo. Uh, you know, that was a company I also followed very closely when they first started out. I kind of lost contact um, with for the past couple of years. But what, what, why did you think they were a good fit for Sightline? Yeah, that's a good question. So we started looking at, I mean, it became you know, abundantly clear to us uh, that that we must provide a vertically integrated solution uh, that goes all the way. The, the way to provide the best consumer experience was through mobile. And uh, and when we looked at who develops mobile apps, I mean, if you look at the casino business today, 75% of the casinos in the country don't have a mobile app. And, uh, you know, your options are very limited on how or where you get a mobile app from. And, uh, and, and you know, so outside of Joingo, you know, one can, you know, try to build their own. And the really, if you're a really big casino company, you have the money to go do that. Right. But but for others, it, that's just not an option. So you know, whereas in our everyday lives, we use apps for everything. There really isn't a, you know a good solution in the gaming industry. So for us, it was a completely natural fit. Uh, uh, you know of 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 you know the, taking the vision of loyalty and mobile and payments and tying it together. Uh, so we couldn't be more thrilled. It's a great product. Uh, it's it's used in about a hundred casinos right now, uh, and and we hope that it's going to get and you know be used in hundreds of casinos as the gaming operators see what we can do when you have a really good consumer experience. Uh, uh, you know, leading towards cashless uh, cashless adoption. So so Sightline can now come to a casino and offer the complete package, including the app. That's exactly right. So, so, so we want to be able to say we we want to show, show you the entire solution. We don't want to talk to you, you know, to, you know, talk about piecemeal. Uh, come and show exactly what the solution looks like. I mean, I can tell you, we've heard from so many folks around the country, gaming operators that we know are going to be uh, visiting Resorts World, uh, not just for the opening, but in the coming weeks and the months. And uh, and 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 we want them to come and see what's possible. Uh, I mean, this has been years and years in the work uh, and in the development. So we do want them to come and see what's possible. Uh, and 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 where the industry is going yeah no question so yeah. um obviously a big hurdle over the years has been the regulators they they uh you know didn't want don't want anybody to be able to use credit cards at a, at a slot machine it was, which yeah. is understandable but but still now people are using credit cards and and all kinds of other cash transfers and, and all kinds of different things so why how did, how did you get them on board and, and how did you make them comfortable with the situation yeah, you know, it's actually been super interesting because uh, we're working with regulators around the country now. Uh, yeah, we're working with regulators in seven or eight commercial casino jurisdictions, just as many tribal jurisdictions. There really has been a change of mindset. I mean, it's 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 been refreshing. And uh, you will see, uh, you know, increasingly, we believe cashless get launched. We're not the only ones, right? I mean, it, we, we are super excited that the other payments companies in our industry are in the space as well, right? No one can move an entire industry themselves. And, uh, you know, we want as many folks as possible uh you know to be in the business and deploy those because that also you know we've been trying to educate the regulators for years for them to understand electronic payments are safe they're secure 
They account for the vast majority of our spending around the world. And the fact that we have not, as the industry have not gotten there, didn't make sense to us. But there really has been a change in mindset, I would say, in the last 12, maybe 15 or 16 months on the regulatory side, including in, 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 in you know, Midwest jurisdictions, jurisdictions in the South. It's not just Nevada. Yeah. Uh, and then it certainly helps when big operators like Resorts World and Boyd Gaming and others that we're working with, uh, you know, Boyd Gaming Launch, Boyd Pay, we've got multiple states up and running with them uh you know so it's 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 uh you know that helps a great deal from the operator side but the regulators are taking more time to understand that digital transactions are safe and secure and you do not have to drain your credit card accounts or your checking accounts there's ways of putting limits uh and in fact in many ways are much better than cash there's also been a shift on on the financial services regulatory side, uh, FinCEN uh, and 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 other financial services regulators, particularly concerned with money launderers, uh, have encouraged the industry uh, to think about uh, you know how to move beyond cash, and that also helps our case. No question. And you mentioned responsible gaming. I mean, that's that's really the the big objection that regulators had that you know you're going to get somebody who's going to empty his bank account under there. So what kind of protections do you have? Uh, again, something like that happens. Yeah, so you can put daily limits. You can completely self-exclude yourself. You can put monthly limits. You can block a certain amount of cash. You can block, uh, you know, how often you want to fund your account. Uh, you can put limits to say, I can only fund my account with a hundred dollars a day. And right. uh, I, I mean, there's, you know, in fact, there's so many ways to create responsible gaming. It's confusing mm -hmm. for the consumer. We've been right. thinking about. You know, how to make the message very clear to the consumer. One of the things that we haven't gone live with yet, but we love and we hope to go live with here soon is visualization work. So if Roger is someone who funds his account with $300 a week and suddenly he's funding with 600, we yeah. want to show you in real time that shows, you know, maybe a little stop sign that says, hey, Roger, you're funding with 600. That's twice your normal average. Now, right. it's your money. You can choose to do it if you want, yeah. but we want to visualize at the point of play for the patron. It's not dissimilar to how we now do it within our banking mobile apps that show us how much money we're spending, where we're spending it, and if it's above your average or below your average. And so we know there's lots of data in the financial services world that shows that visualization works. And uh, but 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 limits are are going to be the key. And you know, showing people, you know, put you know, letting them place their own limits, and uh, and then we have our own default limits because we are very concerned as always about anti-money laundering you can only fund your account with a certain amount of money a day it's not limitless and even if you're a vip there's a certain amount if you're super vip there's a certain amount and uh so so you, you can't you cannot drain all the money in your account uh you know because we have those limits put on our side another hurdle in the old days was the credit card companies getting involved in gambling payments uh, uh i'm assuming that's uh, has that gone away completely or uh or, or, or have you made negotiations with some of these companies? That, that you know, it hasn't. Gone, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. It hasn't gone away completely. I mean, this is an issue across the board for sports betting, for iGaming, gaming, for for cashless casinos. So we've developed a great relationship with Visa, with Mastercard, with American Express, and with Discover, and uh, we continue to educate the networks just the way we're educating gaming on how financial transactions are safe. We're educating the financial services industry that gaming is safe. We're right. not a bunch. Of, we're not a bunch of bad people, right? We, we pay a lot of attention to compliance and safety and security and the integrity of the game. And, uh, and, and so we're also spending a lot of time with, with the big banks in the country. Uh, there's been great positive movement with some of the biggest banks in the country, with Wells Fargo, with J.P. Morgan Chase, most recently with Bank of America. Uh, so, so, so it is becoming more and more positive. There's more work to be done. Uh, we continue to collaborate with the AGA on this uh, and with other trade organiz industry organizations. And uh, But it is much better than it used to be, even much better than 12 months ago. Okay. So you yeah. mentioned, you know, some some uh, quirks of the Nevada regulatory system, and you know, every state has that kind of thing. So how, right. how flexible is, is this uh, is this app is this system going to be? You know, when you're able, you're going to you're trying to transfer it from one state to another. So the one state to another, we figured out. So that's that that that's the that's the great part. And so so you know, for anyone who's a multi jurisdictional operator, uh, we've got that you know for Boyd already. We'll have it you know announced in live here for for other operators as well, mm -hmm. because all the money is in fact kept in a bank account. 
that money itself is FDIC insured, is reggae protected, it's kept in a bank account. So now banking laws apply and it allows a patron to move their money seamlessly across state lines. And uh, so fortunately, that piece of the equation we have been able to solve and where a patron can, you know, create an account in California, fund it, take the money to Nevada, go to Indiana, go to, you know, uh, 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 whatever jurisdiction uh, and have access to their own funds. So, you know, we've done a lot of work with the, with the financial services regulators on that. And, uh, but the key is, I mean, the, the one thing, there, there's a few key things that are absolutely critical when we talk about this cashless ecosystem. When we have tried to distill everything that a consumer could possibly want, and, and it only comes down to a handful of things. The first and most important thing is the consumer must know their money is safe and secure. And right. well, the best way to do that is to make sure it's in a bank account, whether we like banks or not, you know, at the end of the day, we know if our, the money is in a bank, it's safe. And so it's got its FDIC insurance. Second, the consumer wants to know they have access to their money anywhere they want, anyhow they want. And that's critical. So the first one is safety security. The second is access to the money. And uh, the third is it must be more convenient than cash. If it's less convenient than cash, the consumer is just going to use cash. And, right. uh, and the fourth and final piece is consumers want loyalty. And, and that's true in your everyday life for everything that you do. And so if we can, our challenge was how do we put those four things together? Safety and security must have loyalty, must have access, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, have, you know, and, and that's what we've, uh, we've, we've achieved over here with the resorts world. And, uh, so we're excited about that. Okay. So, so, uh, you know, you mentioned that, that you've been active in the online gaming space for, for quite some time. Now, Nevada doesn't have online gaming. It has, has online sports betting, of course. But uh, so can, yep. can, you, can you go from one state to another when, it, when, when, it, when you're going to, you know, put money into a sports book in another state? Or because obviously all the sports books have to operate in separate silos in their own states. They do, but our account, because it's a financial account, in fact, allows you to do that. So for, for folks like us, like, you know, whether it's a client, a multi-jurisdictional right. client, of like Rush Street or DraftKings or FanDuel or BetMGM or whoever that may be, uh, you know, you could, you could create one BetMGM account and take it to multiple jurisdictions where BetMGM operates. Now, obviously, the wager in that state is being placed specifically according to the laws of that state. And but because the money is your own money that's being transported across state lines, that's completely permissible. And, uh, you know, so so whether it's, you know, and so we try to make it really easy for the consumer. Let's just say iGaming was legal in Nevada. But even though if it's not, I gave you the sports example. Right. Once you've created that Resorts World account and uh, your sports betting is done through the IGT system, as a consumer, you just want to place your bet for tonight's game on the Golden Knights. Uh, uh, you know, so you can place your bet on the Golden Knights. But then you want to take your winnings and you want to play a slot device. Well, then you can go play a slot device. And so in the consumer's mind, it's it's one pool of money. It's your money, and it's accessible in sports, you know, or otherwise. And if it, you know, if Resorts World, let's just say that Resorts World had a partnership with a sister property in New York at, at the Catskills, and and New York sports betting is now live. When, well, I could take the same money, go to New York, and place a sports bet in New York uh, through the Catskills ecosystem. Okay, if you're in New York. Yeah. If you're in New York, of course. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's an exciting time for Sightline. You know, uh, you brought Joe Papano on as CEO uh, uh, a few months ago, and then yep. you, you announced a rash of, uh, of hirings the other day. Really, some some people that I know in the industry who've been here a long time. So, what what does it mean that that you're finally able to to really break out and and bring on these talented people and and to add to the team? I, I, wait, I waited 10 years for this, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, this, this, this is more than I, I to tell people is that I waited my entire thirties for this. I'm in my forties. So I'm glad that, uh, that I'm glad that it's finally happening. And, right. you know, Joe's amazing. And, I mean, the, for those that know Joe and many, many people know Joe, and I know, you know, Joe, uh, uh you know, I, I mean, I, we could not ask for a better CEO. Joe has honesty, integrity, knows and understand payments. Customers love him. He loves customers and, and he truly likes delivering what he promises. And, right. Uh, we could, you know, I mean, it, I can tell you this. I mean, it, for me personally, there's no other person that I wanted to be as CEO of, of Sightline other than Joe. And uh, the rest of the team, uh, some have come from outside of gaming, some from inside of gaming. Uh, you'll get to meet some of them. We've, we've recruited some incredible talent from outside of gaming. 
yeah. so from, from you know Western Union and other organizations, and uh, you know we're obviously tremendously excited, uh, you know, for 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 our new investors that have come in. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it's uh, uh, it, there. There are folks uh, that we have a number of new investors that have come in, uh, uh, in in addition to Bill Foley, and so you know we're excited about all of them. Searchlight Capital invested in us in December, uh, you know. So 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 we so we're excited about the people uh, and 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 the money coming in, but most importantly, excited about the product it allows us to build and uh, and finally deliver the vision that we've been working on for ten years. And so, super excited about that. No question. Now, how important is this Resorts World installation right now since it's really the first time it, you can actually get all your products in one place as well as all those other uh, products that, that have come from other companies and they're all integrated together? Yeah, it, it really is important. I, I, I genuinely believe it's a seminal event for the industry. You know, it, I mean, it is, uh, you know, honestly, even if it wasn't Sightline, uh, if it was someone else that was doing this, it, I mean, it would be a seminal event. We want people to come and see. We just want people to see what's possible. And, right. uh, you yeah, know, I mean, I remember going to meetings in 2011 and 12, and we'd walk out of a meeting and people thought we had, you know, a third horn on our head or something, right? right. They're like, what are you talking about? You want to do digital payments, omni channel, you know? So now that it's, it, that it's in fact, happening i mean it's it really is we want people to come in and see it uh and 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 you know it genuinely feels like you know if if over the next three four five six years i would be shocked if we don't see hundreds of properties across dozens of jurisdictions deploying similar ecosystems and okay so uh beyond gaming uh is, there's other other possibilities and what comes to mind immediately is the only other industry I know right now that that doesn't uh, accept electronic transfer payments is uh, the marijuana industry uh, I mean is that is that a possibility sideline could, could get involved in that once that that hurdle goes away yeah you know it, it's all about the gaming regulators there I mean we've known for we in fact from from the, from almost from the very beginning when Colorado was obviously the first jurisdiction right. to, to you know to legalize but not just Colorado, but a number of folks in Nevada and other right. jurisdictions and entire states have approached us and said, hey, we really like what you're doing in gaming. Can we use your ecosystem in the cannabis industry? Right. Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, you know, obviously, from our perspective, uh, you know, we'd want to collaborate very closely uh, with the gaming regulators, uh, with, with, with FinCEN, with the FDIC, with our banking partners. And, uh, but we do believe that there's going to be applications. And, right. uh, you know, uh, but, but we like the gaming industry. I mean, we've had so many we've had approaches over the years to go into the merchant space and to go into other verticals but we are such we're such gaming nerds and uh, <laughs> uh you know we were payments nerds and we're gaming nerds and now we have expanded our thinking of gaming so now we think about daily fantasy sports i gaming commercial gaming tribal gaming state lotteries uh, you know, we used to just think about casinos. And so we've expanded our definition of gaming. We've expanded our definition of gaming from just the U.S. to Canada as well, right? So now we think about North America, vertical gaming, uh, you know, across the board. And, uh, you know, but... but we always have, uh, you know, kind of one side eye on the cannabis industry to see uh, to see what develops. Right. Yeah. No question. Well, Umber, it's, again, it's a real exciting time for Sightline, and it's, it's really gratifying just for me to see see you guys finally breaking out. And I'm really glad for you, and then hope uh, hope it really works out for you. R Roger, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast brought to you by Konami Gaming. Start scheduling a Synchros demo today by visiting konamigaming.com slash systems. To learn more about cashless payments in the gaming industry, visit ggbmagazine.com. To get all the news of the gaming industry, particularly of the recovery from the pandemic, including daily updates, subscribe for free at ggbnews.com by using the code ggb180. Don't miss a single episode of the podcast. Subscribe on iTunes and Spotify today. So we'll see you next time on the GGV Podcast.